dear students today our topic of presentation is one of the electoral systems that is first past the post now let's discuss what first past the post system is the basic task for an election is to translate votes into seats to transform the expressed will of the voters into people who will represent it there are many waves of what fair representation is like geographic representation descriptive representation ideological representation or party political representation regardless of the view that is taken in each country representation as a principle is a key concern of any election or election system in this uh, lecture we will be exploring how plurality representation also known as first past the post as a method of representation works now more than 2000 years ago aristotle he noted that a citizen is not a citizen because he lives in a certain place in simple words citizenship is an attribute of man by dint not of residence but his or her active participation in political choice making how we as citizens participate in the political decision making through first past the post is the objective of today's lecture to make things clear it's important to discuss election as an important instrument over which the entire edifice of democracy or democratic system stands. To understand how different election systems work, let us first take the first pass the post system as a form of representation with its merits, demerits and the working of first pass the post. Now firstly, let us discuss election as a system of representation. We are going to discuss the theoretical view. Casting a vote is actually political decision making. It refers to a practice of choosing a human individual who can act as a representative of people and hold a public office. The process through which such choosing in the form of electing is done is called an election. Election is a system whereby citizens as voters are required to choose or select a candidate among the candidates given in a list called ballot paper or paper ballot. Such a selection is usually carried out through a machine called EVM which means electoral voting machine or ballot box, email box. The criteria for electing a candidate called election criteria is normally set by the constitution of a country and for which representatives are elected is either a legislative body, executive body like parliament or president. Representative democracy in real sense implies that people must be able to exercise real choice in choosing their representatives. Such a system is provided by the process or mechanism of election. The provision of election in a democracy is intended to ensure free, fair and equal voting opportunity. The difference between democratic and non-democratic election is provision of exercising real choice. Elections in liberal democracies are different in the sense that they are competitive. There are two waves, the bottom up and top down theories. The bottom up theory of Harrop and Miller, the orthodox one citrus, the extent to which competitive elections render governments accountable to the governed. This tradition of bottom-up theory emphasizes the upward ascending order flow of communication in the electoral process from the bottom, the voters, to the top, parties and government. Competition between parties forces them to respond to the wills of the electors. The top-down theorists 
such as of Ginsburg are critical in nature and are less positive about the electoral process in liberal democracies. They argue that competitive elections are in essence a device for expanding the power of the elite over the population. Elections incorporate potential dissidents into the political system, reduce popular participation to a mere cross on a ballot and encourage people to obey the state without limiting its autonomy. Elections give a feeling of choice to voters, albeit restricted one. As a result of this choice, the authority of governments over the voters is enormously enhanced. Both the theories also differ on the importance of political parties, which is a backbone of representative democracy. Whereas the bottom-up theorists emphasizes the role of political parties constitute the very essence of election system and give meaning to election, makes competition vibrant through political parties in and out of office which is very fundamental to democracy. For example, a comparison of Britain in 1979 when Margaret Thatcher came to power and in 1990 when she left office. On the other hand, the top down view regards this as only a superficial analysis, rather advocates political mandates, problems and issues matter more than political parties. Whatever parties may say before an election, they face similar problem and seek similar solution after they achieve office. Now coming to the concept of forms of representation. In non-democratic elections like former Soviet Union, what the elections lacked was that voter had a limited choice, either in favor or against a single candidate nominated by the Communist Party. For determining the choice of people, electoral system or election work on two fundamental principles and that play a very important role in this manner. First is the forms of representation. Second, method of election or electoral formula. Now, forms of representation means how voters or electorate will be provided with choices to choose their representatives or put simply whom to vote. Liberal democracies have largely adopted territorial or geographical form of representation and the other being functional representation because it is simple, suitable and expedient. Now, what is territorial representation constituency? Under territorial or geographical representation, the whole country is divided into geographical areas on population basis called constituencies. A constituency refers to an area of a country delimited according to a criteria usually set according to the provisions of constitution of a country or constitutional bodies framed for the purpose in proportion to the population. Now, each constituency is then framed as an electoral constituency. It enables the electorate to know their representative more closely. Voters of each constituency are entitled to elect their representative. The specification of constituency boundaries called redistricting in United States and boundary delimitation in much of the rest of the English speaking world is an important topic for both a legal and theoretical point of view. For example, rules about the degree of population equality required across constituencies can be instrumental in permitting or preventing malapportionment which whether deliberate or unintended can have substantial consequences for the translation of votes into seats and the representation of groups that differ in their geographical location and degree of geographic concentration such as blocks of ethnic voters or party supporters. 
in democracies different methods or electoral formulas are used to conduct elections for electing representatives the most important component of election system is the electoral formula or seat allocation formula no two countries have identical electoral system but there are three main ballot aggregation method each with its own variations that is first is plurality majority second proportional representation third mixed or semi proportional now the principle of plurality majority system is simple after votes have been cast those candidates or parties with most votes are declared the winners five varieties of plurality majority system can be identified first first past the post fptp block vote bv party block vote pbv alternative vote that is av and the two round system that is trs here we are going to restrict our lecture only on one that is first past the post formula the third simple plurality that is the method first past the post now coming to the main this first past the post system it is that the first past the post can be exemplified as winning a race by first crossing finishing mark ribbon or otherwise as finishing post in this type of election system whosoever secures the highest number of votes polled in a constituency that is the territorial unit of election is declared as a winner this plurality system is the simplest means of determining the outcome of an election in this system there is no requirement of winning majority vote mark or achieving any specified number or target given like simple majority or absolute majority in all other case except first past the post a candidate contesting election is required to win over a specified percentage of votes for winning an election however the more candidates contesting a constituency seat the greater the probability that the winning candidate will receive only a minority of the votes cast with respect to constituencies a key distinction is between single member districts that is smds and multi member districts that is mmds now single member constituency in first past the post system in the single member plurality system the person or party holding maximum number of votes is the winner this method is popular and mainly found in the united kingdom and its former colonies notably the united states also in argentina bolivia jamaica mauritius the philippines and thailand Italy adopted a mainly plurality majority system with single member districts in 1994. In this system the entire area gets divided into single member constituencies which are generally of equal size. The electoral votes are cast for a single candidate for each constituency that is each voter gets to vote for a single candidate. to govern for their constituency this system which is also called the first past the post system there is a higher probability of winning such election despite getting minority votes in favor for example if five candidates contesting an election get 32 25 14 18 11 votes out of total 100 votes polled the winner is the one who has secured the largest number of votes that is 32 votes this means that although the majority of votes 100 minus 32 which is equivalent to 68 votes were not favoring this candidate yet this candidate is declared winner because the maximum number of votes casted in favor of any candidate belongs to him This method can lead to a victory in seats for a party coming second in votes and also discriminates against those minor parties whose support is evenly distributed across the country. 
where strong national parties exist as in the UK and the USA, the system can deliver a majority government by a single party even though no single party normally secures a majority of votes. Its advantage is simplicity and direct democratic accountability. Because each district is represented by only one representative, this system is also likely to produce single party governments with stable majorities. And this favors clear lines of political accountability. The first pass the post system favors large parties and discriminates against small ones. To the extent that voting for one of them is often seen as a wasted vote. Now let us discuss multi-member constituency in the first pass post system. Now multi-member in the first pass the post system is an electoral system where voters cast their votes for multiple candidates and the candidate who receives the most votes are elected. In a multi-member first pass the post system, each constituency is represented by more than one member and voters are allowed to vote for more than one candidate. The candidates who receive the highest number of votes are elected to represent the constituency. The number of members elected from each constituency can vary depending on the electoral system and the size of the constituency. Multi-member first past the post is commonly used in countries such as United Kingdom and Canada, where it is used to elect members of parliament. It has been criticized for creating a disproportionate representation of political parties and for reducing voters choice as voters are limited to voting for only a small number of candidates. A variation on first past the post is the block vote which combines first past the post counting with multi-member districts. Voters have as many votes as there are seats to be filled and the highest polling candidate fill the positions regardless of the percentage of the votes they achieve. This system with the change that voters vote for the party list instead of individual candidates become the party block vote. Now let us discuss the advantages and disadvantages of first pass the post system. Now firstly we will come to the advantages of first pass the post system. Now the first pass the post system also known as the majority vote system is an electoral system in which the candidate or party that receives the most votes in a constituency wins the election regardless of whether they achieve an absolute majority or not. This system has advantages and disadvantages which we are going to discuss. Now the first one is simplicity and familiarity. The first pass pose the system is a simple and easy to understand electoral system which can make it familiar and accessible to voters. It involves casting a single vote for a candidate and the candidate with the most votes wins. This simplicity can facilitate voter participation and engagement in the democratic process. Now, the second advantage is clear accountability. In first pass the poll system voters can hold individual candidates and parties accountable for their performance in office. If a candidate or party fails to deliver on their promises or perform well, voters can hold them responsible in the next election. The third advantage is stability and decisiveness. First pass the post tends to produce clear winners with a stable and decisive outcome. As the candidate or party that receives the most votes wins outrightly. This can result in a strong and effective government with a clear mandate to govern and can help avoid prolonged periods of uncertainty or instability. 
The fourth advantage of this first pass post system is that the strong and stable governments. The first pass post the system tends to produce single party majorities in parliament which can result in strong and stable governments. This can allow for decisive policy making and reduce the need for coalition building and negotiations among multiple parties. Now, the other advantage of this system is that direct link between candidates and constituencies. In first pass the post system, candidates are typically elected to represent specific geographic constituencies, creating a direct link between elected representatives and their constituents. This can enhance accountability as constituents can hold their representatives directly responsible for their actions or decisions. Now, coming to the other advantage of this system is that it promotes broad based support. First pass the post can incentivize political parties to seek broad based support across different constituencies as they need to win the most votes in each constituency to secure victory. This can encourage parties to adopt moderate positions and build broad coalitions as they need to appeal to a wide range of voters to win elections. This was all about the advantages of this first pass the post system. Now, let us discuss the disadvantages of first pass the post system. Now, the first disadvantage of this first pass the post system is that there is limited proportionality. First pass the post can result in a mismatch between the proportion of votes a party receives and the number of seats it wins in parliament. This can lead to a lack of proportionality where smaller parties may be underrepresented or even shut out of parliament while larger parties may be overrepresented. Second disadvantage is vote splitting. First past the post can lead to vote splitting, where similar candidates or parties split the votes of a particular ideological or political group, resulting in a candidate or party with fewer votes winning the seat. This can lead to outcomes where the party or candidates with the most votes does not necessarily represent the majority preferences of the electorate. Now, another disadvantage is lack of diversity. First pass the post can sometimes result in limited diversity in parliamentary representation as smaller parties or candidates from underrepresented groups may face barriers in winning seats. This can result in a lack of representation for diverse voices and perspectives in parliament. Another disadvantage is disproportionate representation. First pass the post can result in disproportionate representation, where a party or candidate that receives a minority of the popular vote may still win a majority of seats. This can lead to a perspective lack of fairness or representativeness in the electoral outcomes as the distribution of seats may not accurately reflect the popular vote. Another disadvantage is exclusion of smaller parties. The first pass the post can discourage smaller parties or minority groups from participating in the political process as they may face challenges in winning in individual constituencies. This can result in limited political diversity and can lead to some vices or interests being underrepresented or ignored. The other disadvantage is that there is a disparity in wasted votes. The first pass the post can result in a large number of wasted votes, votes that do not contribute to the election of a candidate. Votes cast for losing candidates or for winning candidates in excess of what is needed to win 
are considered wasted. This can lead to a sense of disenfranchisement among voters whose votes do not result in representation in parliament. Coming to the other disadvantage is winners takes all mentality. First past the post can foster a winner takes all mentality where the meaning candidates or a party takes all the power and representation and the losing candidates or parties receives no representation. Even if they have significant support, this can lead to a polarized political landscape and may not accurately reflect the diversity of opinion and interests in the electorate. Now coming to other disadvantage that is lack of proportionality. First past the post does not guarantee proportionality between the percentage of votes a party receives and the percentage of seats it obtains. This can result in a discrepancy between the popular votes and the distribution of seats which can be seen as unfair or undemocratic. Now let's see the working of first past the post in different political system. The first past the post electoral system or winner takes all system is used in various political systems around the world. Some of the systems where first past the post typically works are as under. The first one is the unitary system. In a unitary system of government such as the United Kingdom and Canada, the first past the post is used to elect members of parliament or the legislature at the national level. In these countries, the country is divided into constituencies or electoral districts and voters in each constituency elect a single representative using first past the post. The candidate who receives the highest number of votes, a plurality, not necessarily a majority, in a constituency wins. The seat and represents that constituency in the national legislature. Now where it works, it works again in the federal system also. So in a federal system of government such as the United States and India, first past the post is used in some states or regions to elect representatives to the national or federal level of government. In the US, for example, first past the post is used in state level elections to elect members of the House of Representatives and the Senate, as well as in the Electoral College for the election of the President. In India, first past the post is used in the Lok Sabha that is the house of the people and lower house of the parliament to elect members. Third, it is also used in hybrid systems. Now, in some countries, a combination of first past the post and other electoral system may be used. For example, in France, first past the post is used in the first round of presidential elections and a two round system is used where if no candidate receives a majority of votes in the first round, the top two candidates face off in a second round where the candidate with the most votes wins. Electing a president through first pass the post system. The most straightforward way of electing a president is to simply award the office to the candidate who wins a plurality of the votes, even if this is less than an absolute majority. This is the case for presidential election in Bosnia, South Korea, Mexico, the Philippines, Rwanda, Singapore, Taiwan, Tunisia, Venezuela and many others. Such a system is simple, cheap, but in a strong competitive multi-candidate contest, the possibility is that the president may be elected with so few votes that he or she is not seen as the choice of a substantial majority electorate and indeed may be opposed by a substantial majority. Examples include like Venezuela in 1993 when Rafael Caldera won the presidency with 30.5% of the popular vote. 
Taiwan experienced a major political shift in 2000 when the challenger Shen Shubian won the presidency with just 39 percent of the vote, less than 3 percent ahead of the next candidate. Now, in the United States uses an electoral college system which is similar to first past the post in some aspects for the election of the president. Under the US electoral college system, voters in each state cast their votes for a state of electors who are pledged to a particular presidential candidate. The candidate who wins the majority of the electoral votes, uh, 270 out of 538, becomes the president, regardless of whether they won the majority of the popular vote. This can lead to a situation in which the winning candidate pulls fewer votes than the runner-up as in 2000, when the Republican candidate George W. Bush won despite polling some half a million fewer votes than the Democratic candidate Al Gore. Now, let's evaluate first past the post with other electoral systems. Much ink is split on the issue of which is the best electoral system. In truth, there is no such thing. Different methods work best in different circumstances. In countries with intense social divisions such like Northern Ireland, PR may work better providing some representation to parties based on minority groups. Similarly, a strong case may be made for first past the post polluter system where regular changes in government occur under a majority system. In a classic work, uh, Duerger in 1954 claimed that first past the post strongly favored a two party system where proportional representation contributed to a multi-party system. More generally, first past the post was associated with strong, decisive government. Proportional representation was found guilty by its association with unstable coalition governments. First past the post has reinforced Protestant supremacy in North Ireland but contributed to the swing of pendulum in mainland Britain. Thus, the electoral system which is most appropriate for a particular country depends on the nature of its society and especially the relative size of the major social groups within it. But in the 1960s, a reaction set in against attributing weight to political institutions such as electoral systems. Writers such as Rokan in 1970 adopted a more sociological approach, arguing that social cleavages had produced multi-party system in Europe long before proportional representation was adapted. Now, proportional representation did not cause a multi-party system, rather proportional representation was adopted because it was the only electoral system which would satisfy the numerous parties thrown up by social divisions. In any case, the same procedure can have different effects in different countries. Unlike in majoritarian systems such as alternate vote and the two round system, wherein to win a candidate must gain majority votes, absolute majority that is over 50 percent or 50 percent plus one. The single member first past the post has an advantage of simplicity over both two where the disadvantages is the need for a second ballot in case of two round system shortly after the first. It was thought in a state to use first past post because the proportional representation would produce political instability. However, first past the post had pushed parties in and out of office because the result in seats exaggerates the result in votes. For example, Canada in 1984, the Conservative Party won three quarters of the seats on just half the vote. 
the bias of the first past the post against small parties has also become more apparent as minor parties have gained ground. In the British election of 1983, the alliances of liberals and social democrats received 7.8 million votes, that is the 26 percent, but only 23 out of 650 seats, that is 3.5 percent. Significantly, none of the post communist states adopted a majority system for their founding elections. Moments for electoral reforms have emerged in most of the countries, still using first past the post. The main reason for this is that parties elected under one system have no incentive to change to another. If first past the post gives too little weight to smaller parties, proportional representation arguably gives them too much. Under proportional representation, smaller parties are often in a pivotal position in post-election coalition negotiations, able in theory to form an alliance with either major party. In addition, advocates of decisive government argue that coalitions tend towards the lowest common denominator, acting in particular as a barrier against a radical but necessary change. For better or worse, it is difficult to see a figure such as Margaret Thatcher emerging as a compromise coalition leader after an election fought under proportional representation. Now let us conclude. Democracy is a value system manifest in pluralism. Respect for rights, equality and freedom is a value system of bringing ordinary people at par with higher echelons of power. The experiment of changing society into a democratic society that bears such a value system is experimented through electocracy, that is by strengthening election system. Since election is the starting point of any democracy to succeed. It is election that provides basis for a successful working in practice of democracy. People's participation in the election process makes democracy functional and the power of right to exercise vote and choose of the choice is a testimony to practice of democracy. In democracy, it is people who provide structural foundation to the functioning of democratic government. Democratic governance is the nerve of our democracy, which is made to functional and live by participation of people through elections only. Thus, practice of democracy, which is proportional to the successful functioning of a democracy, is possible only by a well-established election system. First past the post provides such simple calibrated and efficient mechanism for electing representatives who hold office, different kinds of electoral systems are likely to encourage different kinds of party organization and party system. While it is important for party system to be as representative as possible, most experts favor system which encourages the development of parties based on broad political values and ideologies and specific policy programs rather than narrow ethnic, racial or regional concerns. As well as reducing the threat of societal conflict, parties which are based on these broad cross-cutting cleavages are more likely to reflect national opinion than those that are based predominantly on sectarian or regional concerns. Different kinds of electoral system also result in different relationships between individual candidates and their supporters. In general, systems which make use of single member electoral districts such as most plurality majority systems are seen as encouraging individual candidates to see themselves as the delegates of particular geographical areas and beholden 
to the interests of their local electorate. By contrast, systems which use large multi-member districts such as most proportional representation systems are more likely to deliver representatives whose primary loyalty lies with their party on national issues. Both approaches have their merits which is one of the reason for the rise in popularity of mixed systems that combine both local and national level representatives. The question of accountability is often raised in the discussion of political parties and electoral systems, especially in relation to individual elected members. The relationships between electors, elected members and political parties are affected not only by the electoral system, but also by other provisions of political legislative framework, such as term limits, provisions regulating the relationship between parties and their members who are also elected representatives, or provisions bearing elected members from changing parties without resigning from the legislature. The freedom for voters to choose between candidates as opposed to parties is another aspect of accountability. Many countries in recent years have therefore introduced a greater element of candidate-centered voting into their electoral systems, for example, by introducing open listers in proportional representation elections. So, dear students, this was all about first-pass-the-post system. I hope you have understood. Thank you.